Do you ever do anything with all the excess nail? Like, do you use it for some sort of recycling modem or just throw it all away? No, you see the dog eat it, to be quite honest with you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, it's really, there's nothing you can do with it. It's, uh, it's basically the exact same structure as your fingernail. Uh, it, it grows exactly the same. It is the same material. It's the same thing as your fingernail. The only difference is, is it stops right here. Mm. So it becomes living tissue from this point right here in. Right, all this right here on the outside, the hoof wall, that is the same thing as your fingernail. So a, another good example, this is good to kind of pay attention to. When the horse's foot is up, blood flow is flowing through the foot. When it, the minute it puts it on the ground, the foot is, loses all its blood flow. It cuts the circulation off, just like our fingernail. So it's the same exact thing as they're standing. So right now he's got no blood flow. But as soon as he picks it up, there's blood flow. And that's what keeps the foot healthy. So I'm just going to dress this foot back. Uh, I believe in doing this with every foot. It's a safety thing so that you don't take too much foot off. I actually have a, a measurement that I use. Um, I use the palm of my hand now because I've done it long enough. I used to use a ruler every time. But as you can see, it doesn't have much toe there, so it's not going to be too much.
why it's like cheese? I am grading it, but the per the periopal or the laminae mm -hmm. is all separate. I could actually show you here in a second. I'll show you just so you understand. It's all little strands. Maybe that model. Can you see it in the model? If the little strands. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. After trimming him down like this and taking off his shoes, is it okay for him to walk around barefoot? Oh yeah, like he can go barefoot. He can be no problem. No, right here on the wall. If you look, the lamini is a bunch of little strands of hair. It is hair, just like our fingernails are hair. And it's little strands of hair in there, and that's what makes their hoof wall pliable. It can it can go in any direction. If I were to take I wonder if I can do it for you right here. We'll put this. Thank you. <laughs> Let's see if I can do this. If I if he'll do it for me. If I do that and now he probably won't do it. What can I do? Good. So, so I'm just going to let his foot rest on there, and you're going to see he's not going to really care if he'll keep it there. So, so if he were to stay on this for, let's say, an hour, this heel, this foot is so pliable, this heel would drop this way. He would actually drop. It would fall to the ground. His heel would find the ground within hours because that's what he wants. He wants his foot on the ground. So that's what he would do. Wow. And that's how pliable that is. That's why all them little lines are so important because they're actually separate strands. And when you see it come off the foot, it's actually peeling off just like string cheese. Okay. <laughs> good, that's good you saw that. What's the purpose of having this little hook on the front of this horse? Good question. That's called a clip. And again, I go off tradition. I'm kind of pure that way as far as the trade goes. And in England, no horse gets shod without a clip. And it's basically security for me. So that there are times I do lose shoes, but it's very rare. And I can say that most of the time, uh, I think last year I put on three, I had to go back and re-tack on three shoes out of 150 horses. Did they have those kind of? And, and they all had clips, but just it happens sometimes. They get them, and they're amazing. They can even get them. But it's, it's a security device. It keeps it from sliding or moving while they're running. Okay. And on the back feet, they get two clips. They, have to get, they get one on each quarter, yeah. and that's where they get them. Before I started using my five years ago, my second had a shoe that I had to have the shoe come back. Yeah. I've lost one, two, five years. If you guys want to watch me do this side, then we'll just kind of swap over. We'll go. Everyone will go out that way and come on this wall, and I'll scoot Spirit over this way. If you want to watch again. Yeah, go down that way. Okay, you guys can go on that side. There you go. I kind of laughed because uh, I wasn't the best, I'll say, uh, student in school when I was younger. And I, I always used to joke with my teachers to tell them I'd, I'd never need the math they were trying to teach me. And uh, it's all come back to haunt me now. Because <laughs> uh, I, I, I study physics every day. Every day I pick up this foot, I'm studying physics. I study geometry every day because this is a perfect example of geometry. And uh, I tease everybody about it because I, even some of my old teachers I've seen, I tell them, well, I guess I should have paid attention that day, you know. <laughs> Cause, uh, and, and they Hate all those laugh. words, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Where did you grow up, Mark? Uh, I grew up in the high desert. Did you? Yeah, I graduated from Asperia High School. Wow. Back in 89. And did you have any exposure to horses growing up? Zero. Zero? Zero. Wow, that's amazing. So then... You just decided to change careers and went for it. How incredible. That yeah. That's so cool.
And you just went to school for like two months? I went to school for two months to a, a farrier school. Um, but like I said, they barely get your feet wet. I mean.